Welcome to Narrator's Cut. Today, we're going to show you a comedy movie called Cream Pains. A furious suburban housewife and her closest friend create an illegal coupon club that defrauds firms and gives bargains to coupon clippers. Fortunately, a clueless loss prevention officer and a determined USPS mail inspector are on their tails. Watch out for spoilers and keep an eye on. Connie Kaminsky, a middle-aged suburban housewife who competed in the Olympic race walk and won three gold medals, suffers from an existential crisis and financial indebtedness. Rick, Connie's spouse, works as a senior auditor for the Internal Revenue Service. They intended to start a family. Connie became pregnant with a baby girl after undergoing a series of costly IVF procedures at a fertility clinic. The infant, on the other hand, did not make it. The relationship was ruined as a result of the catastrophe. Meanwhile, Rick kept himself occupied with work, while Connie was occupying her time gathering coupons and hoarding supplies. The money they spent on pricey fertility therapy is something Connie is attempting to recoup in some matter. And... She may also want to become a mother for the second time. Connie lives in a bubble with her best friend, Jojo Johnson, in which they both feel safe. Jojo is a cosmetic artist who creates video lessons, much like Connie, but she is also out of work, just like her friend, Connie. Both ladies collect coupons, and supplies are amassed until Connie comes up with a good business plan. She received a voucher for a free cereal box after writing a letter to the firm in which she expresses her dissatisfaction with stale cereal. Connie is ecstatic, and she continues to send additional complaint letters, resulting in more free vouchers for the product. Jojo and Connie speculate that if they can obtain more of these free coupons and sell them for half the price, they will generate a substantial income with little or no outlay of capital. Writing complaint letters, on the other hand, does not appear to be a practical option. As a result, Connie and Jojo travel to Chihuahua, Mexico to meet Advanced Solutions, a coupon printing factory and coupon clearing house. Connie comes up with a brilliant idea of stealing these vouchers and selling them on the internet. Jojo, on the other hand, has a bad feeling about things. Will Connie's odd business concept succeed in bringing them out of poverty, or will it fail? In Chihuahua, Mexico, Connie and Jojo enlisted the help of an advanced solution printing plant employee, Alejandro and Rosa, a member of their illicit trade, to create a family for themselves. In addition, Alejandro informed them that there was always one additional coupon for every batch of coupons that they printed. The surplus vouchers were usually burned, but Alejandro smuggled them into the United States through highways. Connie and Jojo received the parcel, which was addressed to them. They offered the coupons on their website, SavvySuperSaver.com, which was accessible over the internet. Jojo began creating videos to attract potential homemakers to give her marketing a boost. However, as sales increased, the firms became more aware of the situation. Ken Miller, the loss prevention officer, a coupon geek, received several complaints about bogus coupons. Ken, on the other hand, was unable to identify any problems with the forged coupons. Ken concluded that they were not counterfeit coupons, but rather actual coupons that had somehow made their way to customers through a secondary route. Ken attempted to call the FBI to have them check into the fraud. Nonetheless, the director determined that the matter was too little to warrant an investigation by the country's famed law enforcement organization. The counterfeit saltwater coupon case was misplaced at the FBI's headquarters in Washington. At the same time, the Queen Pins amassed multi-million dollar fortunes via the unlawful sale of coupons. Connie was under the impression that their coupon money was contaminated for some weird reason. So the Queen Pins went out and bought Lamborghinis, weapons, and planes on the spur of the moment, assuming that selling them would clear their debts. Connie, on the other hand, went to the fertility clinic and reapplied for the procedure. But instead of using her husband's sperm, she spent $330,000 on a more potent one that was more effective. Meanwhile, U.S. Postal Inspector Simon Kilmurray got in touch with Ken Miller to break the coupon scheme and arrest him. Simon urged Ken to purchase a coupon from SavvySuperSaver.com to monitor the mail that was being sent to him. Through the postcard, Simon determined that these letters were being sent from Phoenix which would most likely be the location of the company coupons seller's headquarters. Ken Piscina, a dark web geek, stated to the Queen Pins that they already had clean money and shouldn't have spent it on such pricey stuff. 
She exhorted Connie and Jojo to sell their possessions as soon as possible. While the couple was busy with weaponry of sale to a Phoenix militia, Simon and Ken arrived in the Phoenix to begin their journey. The detectives followed the trail of clues and apprehended Connie and Jojo. Connie and her friend Jojo were arrested and accused of orchestrating the most significant counterfeit coupon scheme in history. During interrogation, Connie confessed to her crimes and informed Simon and Ken that she had formed a network because she was wary of pursuing the traditional life route and wanted to do something about it. She desired more from life, but she could not maintain her sense of self for an extended time. Her buddy Jojo helped her discover that Connie knew more about coupons than she did about anything else. Simon was aware of the monetary value of the coupons and was convinced that the general public used them to make financial savings. On the other hand, Connie and Ken stated that it wasn't about what you bought, but rather about the sensation you receive after using a coupon. The usage of coupons causes people's oxytocin levels to rise, according to Ken. It is referred to as coupon high. To put it in another way, Connie didn't sell coupons so much as she marketed the experience of utilizing coupons. Simon, on the other hand, as opposed to their philosophical viewpoint, as a result of her misdeed, judge indicated that Connie would be sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. Kenneth made the modest suggestion that Connie hires an expensive attorney as a token of his appreciation. Because Connie accepted full responsibility for the offenses, Jojo was sentenced to 10 days in jail and one year of probation. According to speculation after the bust, Alejandro and Rosa Diaz, the Mexican equivalents, vanished, most likely to live a luxury life someplace near the beach. Connie was again discouraged by her spouse, so she severed all contacts with him and filed for divorce. Connie's attorney defended her in court and stated to the jury that his client had just exploited loopholes and taken advantage of a flawed system on his client's behalf. The court took the bait and, considering the nature of her conduct, sentenced her to 11 months in jail with the possibility of release after that period. After hearing the court's decision, Ken Miller erupted in a fit of rage. He attempted to argue with the defense counsel, who discreetly reminded him that international firms do not want their logo to appear on the news channel in which they are broadcasting. As a result, their shareholders demanded that the subject be closed without further media attention. For them, the loss was only a write-off that had no impact on their financial statement. Ken, on the other hand, had a difficult time moving on. Ken's personal life was not entangled with his business life, and Simon graciously advised him not to do so. Don't spend too much time looking for things. Ken's character has lived a life shaped by a set of rigid principles from the beginning of the story. He wasn't the type of person who would break the rules for anyone, including himself. As a result of his severe demeanor, he was very much on his own. After collaborating with Simon on the coupon fraud, Ken learned to value a life lesson. It is essential not to take things personally. A valuable life lesson. It is essential not to take things personally. It is good to let go now and again. Ken made an exception for an older woman who presented him with a fake coupon after Queen Pins, and he extended the discount to her. It was the makeover that a character required, and he accomplished it excitingly. While Connie was serving her sentence in prison, Jo discovered Connie's money hoard in her daughter's chamber. The money Jojo invested in a coupon printing plant in Montenegro, which she named Bogo Industries after her father. She most likely purchased it to print and sell coupons and strengthen their business strategy. Connie became pregnant while at the correctional facility and gave birth to a healthy kid. Finally, her lifelong ambition of becoming a mother would become a possibility. Furthermore, she asserts, it doesn't matter how you get to the finish line. It's only that you get there. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. And please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel for more interesting movies to recap. Take care and see you at the next video.